everyone. Gotta mute myself here. Can everyone hear me? I'm getting like a feedback. Okay. okay. Oh, shoot. Anyone else getting a feedback? It worked earlier. Hold on. You guys there? Is that working? Is that working? Any feedback? Any feedback? Let me know real quick. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know how I uh, managed that one. I did everything I did before. Okay. Now we're back. Hello, everyone. Okay, so I have this uh, big trash can I'm doing. There's a piston. It's hard to see the design. I showed it earlier. Um, show you guys. Okay, so that's the design. It's wrapped around the whole trash can. And um, what I did was I laid this white paper tape down and I transferred the piston design on it. And then I also drew out, um, I want like a silver border and things like that. So I drew that out and I already exacto knifed everything. I was initially just gonna do the border and then like the piston and silver. But then I was like, I'll just leap the whole thing. Why not, right? All right, so I was hanging my brush um, in xylene for quite a bit. Gotta clean it out. Hey Marty, uh, how's it going? I'm leafing up a storm today, so I'm happy. How's it going out there? Hope everyone enjoyed their day. So I'm using a uh, Ducks Quick Size, and I have it tinted with one shot already. Uh, I just did another panel before I turned you guys back on. So I have to peel away the areas I want to start leafing. Now this is going to be silver leaf, so I want to engine turn all this. It's basically why I decided to tape up the whole thing. Some areas might not be perfectly cut. I'll get into them. And I want this part of the wing silver. Now I'm going to be doing silver leaf, imitation gold leaf, and three types of variegated leaf on this. It's going to be fun. Like I said, might not have had this cut perfectly on all the little meetings, but it'll make do. It all gets outlined and other colors are going to be mixed in here too. All right, so that's going to be silver. So since I'm doing a few different variegated leaves and everything like that, I'm going to do two different types of leaf at a time.
that way I can speed up my process rather than doing each one separately. I should have picked this off first, but you guys get to watch the whole process, I guess, if you feel like tuning in that long. Unless they use a dull X-Acto blade, which is kind of new, so it's kind of disappointing these things don't last that long. What was everyone up to today? Fourth of July over here. I worked. Metal Mania 3D TV is tuning in. Hello. They're tuning in on the YouTube side of things. I have this going live on YouTube also. I gotta get myself some of that FBS gold mask. I have the tape in like one inch rolls, but they make it a big mask, like how big this is. And that stuff is beautiful to work with. It's not as thick as this. Now we're rocking and rolling. Hello, Butch from the West Coast, Canada. That's cool. All right, so this is going to be one of the variegated leaves, this session of feathers. All right, and then I want to peel back this. This is going to be silver. This is all going to be engine turned. tape and it has like a paper feeling on top like you can do like a full drawing on it um, and erase on it and stuff like that um, usually works better if you're using a sharp exacto knife but I guess they use this to in the vinyl graphic world I don't know if they all use this but that's where I found it But it's nice to be able to, you know, lay out a design like this because I have to protect the surface from getting scratched when I engine turn this area. And this works out. All right. And I need this set here. Turn it this way. Oh, it's working so much better than the other side. And then this set of wings. Um, I got it from my local sign supply shop. You can probably look at, like, um, maybe signwarehouse.com or harbor sales online. I know they uh, sell to the masses. The sound got a cackle in it. I don't have a mic, I'm using my cell phone, so I'm sorry if the sound's not perfect. Um, I have a new cell phone, so there's no plug-in for the old mic that I used to use, and I'm still debating on whether to get 
a Bluetooth mic or not because they're not cheap. And I don't go live a lot, obviously. You guys got me twice today, but before that, it's been a while. Yeah, the only thing you have to worry about with the carbon paper is that it can stain surfaces pretty well. I use a Sorol, I use the chalk paper all the time. I used yellow on this, I couldn't find my blue. All right, where am I? I'm gonna do this one. This one is a double layer, so hopefully it, it cuts fine. You can see where that silver border is going to be. Are you working with your airbrush today? No, I'm not. Um, I don't airbrush a lot. I'm still in a house studio where if I spray even with the window and fan and you can still smell it in the rest of the house. So I don't airbrush a lot, but I'm going to be changing that. And next year I'll be in a separate space I'll be airbrushing, hopefully up a storm, because I have quite a few ideas I want to do and learn. Quite a build up, so I'm going to take this top layer here and cut that because this is all going to get spun, and I don't want a big ledge there. down the leaf how long do you wait before you tear off the application tape and what do you do about the areas that chip off so um this is only if i'm using imitation leaf and if i'm engine turning it um i will pull the tape off right after i engine turn it and i engine turn it right after i leaf it and then uh, I just get got to be very careful about my timing when I leaf and how well I press the leaf into the size, so it gets into the corners of uh, between you know the edge of the tape. And then I pull gently, and if I get any areas that come up, usually they're getting outlined anyway, so I don't worry too much about it. But if it's a lot, then um, I just go in and press more leaf in those areas. Oh my goodness. All right. Alright, so this is all the area that's going to be getting aluminum, aka silver leaf, attached to it. Be using a French Masters 180, I mean, sorry, French Masters 3173. Spin all the stuff out of my brush, and now I'm going to start mopping in 
all the the size. I could have tinted this heavier, but it is what it is. I should have wiped down this area. I forgot to do that, but I should be okay. I'll wipe down the rest real quick. This is just the nature of alcohol and then give the surface a quick wipe. Now this I'm doing for the Syracuse Nationals. It's a show in uh, Syracuse, New York, upstate New York area. There's like over 3,000 fingers right into the size. Accidents do happen. All right. So there's about like over 3,000 cars that show up and uh, it goes on from Friday to Sunday, and I've been going up there, I think, since 2013 or 2014, and they have a panel jam up there. It is now called the Brush Fest, and what we do is we make a few items before the show, and like a whole bunch of artists, I think there's like 60 artists, pinstripers from all over. Um, the country come out and we bring three finished items and then we paint all weekend for charity all everything that we paint gets auctioned off for the Ronald McDonald House of Central New York and um, so it's really fun to be able to do pieces for that event because it's like I can do whatever I want I can be as creative as I want it's a great time friends Um, how heavy do you go with the duck size? I don't go heavy at all. Um, I try to lay down a thin, thin coating. The thinner the coat you put down, the less time you have to wait. And also the less that you have to worry about things going wrong. Like if you put the, um, leaf down and you have a really, really thick, um, glob of um, size down and you go to end and turn it you have more of a chance to rip through it because chances are your size isn't set up all the way if it's really laid on thick it'll have like top dry hard to believe the nationals a week away week and a half away Oh, I, I'm like, I can't believe it's July. I feel like it's still, like, April. It's hard to believe how fast this year's gone. I can't wait to get up to New York again, though. For that show, anyway. I like upstate New York. I don't really care for the city.
So this is going to be variegated. And that's not going to be engine turned. Oh, Chris, that's a bummer you found out too late. Plan on it for next year. It's a great event. Even the car show is wonderful. They have so much stuff going on. Shirley Medowney's going to be there this year. They have a whole bunch of dragsters that are going. They have a whole entire section for like more rockabilly-esque stuff. All right, so do this. Oh, lost a hairbrush. Gotta just make sure I don't put my fingers in the sides again. I guess everyone's out watching fireworks tonight. They set off the fireworks last night here. Run this line all the way over. So I don't get like a hard edge to go back and forth with. If anyone has questions while I'm doing this, feel free to ask. I'm going to get to the point when I'm done sizing this where I have to wait to leaf it and I'll break out the pinstriping brushes and do like a small panel. This section is going to be silver. Now this section is going to be another type of variegated gold, or variegated leaf, I should say. And because you can't really do sections so close to each other, that's why I have like, you know, I changed the colors out. This is the glue. I put my finger in it again. Somewhere. Or maybe it was on the tape. Yeah, I'm not seeing any fingerprints. Okay. Yeah, if I didn't tint the glue, it would be like totally clear on here but I tinted it so I can see it actually. Um, Chris asks, how long do you let your size dry for? Uh, that all depends on the temperature 
of the room, how thick I lay it on, and also what type of leaf I'm working with and humidity. I have a YouTube video about leafing and I talk more about that. So because I'm working with imitation leaf, I'll wait a lot um, shorter time than I would with like a genuine leaf. I might wait like 35 minutes to lay the leaf down on this, or I might wait 45 minutes If it was hotter, then I might have to only wait like 25 minutes. It all changes. But if it's humid, then I have to wait longer. It can be the same temperature, but if it's humid, then everything gets slowed down anyway. Are you gonna get Dan asks, how are you going to keep the variegated leaf and the wings separate from the silver leaf border where it overlaps? Very carefully. Um... So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the silver first, do the silver first, which is here and here, and right here is where a variegate, where the variegated starts, and it does touch the silver, but I feel like it is such a small area that I can run a piece of silver leaf over this way and go up, and hopefully it won't touch down in the, the variegated leaf section here. So all this is going to be done first, I'm going to work my way like from bottom up or I can do bottom up silver and then switch over to the variegated make sure I get it here and then just continue with silver I'll figure it out as I go but there's always a plan um, doo -doo -doo. Roy yes Milwaukee was a good time sorry you missed it um, doo -doo. I bought gold leaf at Hobby Lobby. Is it the same as the one you get at a paint store? So you'll be surprised some of the leaf that I'm using today is from Hobby Lobby. Um, it is not, you know, real leaf. There's a hair in there. Um, it works just fine. Okay, got it out. Where are my side? I'm gonna do these guys next. Okay. Yeah, the silver I'm gonna be laying down is from just the craft store. It's fake silver, it's aluminum leaf. And uh, it works fine. I'm using the, you know, the 5000 grit Trizac to spin it. So no worries. They used to sell variegated leaf at the craft stores too. That worked really well, but they stopped carrying it. So now I get that from WB Gold Leaf. If I want like a really cool, cool one, I order from them. And then um, they have all different patterns. It's amazing. And then I also order from LA Gold Leaf. They have a few patterns available that are very affordable. So I get some of that too. I don't do a lot of variegated. Usually I have to wait to like one of these charity shows to use the variegated. I really like it. But I don't get to work with it a lot. I can't wait to see this finish. This is going to be cool. I keep my fingers out of the size. Okay. Sometimes you'll get little fuzzies in here and I just pick them out with the tip of my brush. Hmm. 
when I turn it, it ripped off. If um you're getting rippage when you're engine turning, it can be like two things. It's either your size is too wet or your size was too dry and your leaf didn't stick down before you turned it. Or you didn't press the leaf into the size. So believe me, the more you do it and the more you mess up, the more you'll learn to correct yourself and learn. But if you stick for this video, you'll see how much I press the leaf into the size, especially um, imitation leaf. It is so much thicker than genuine. You really need to press it down. All right, now this piston. And this is all going to be engine turn this this guy here. It'll be really cool. And then I'm going to do all black work on it. Like probably in a stipple or a crosshatch effect. With paint after I clear it. Which I'll clear it tomorrow at some point of the day. Okay, that says that that's it for round one. Oh, I gotta check the time. brush out. Anyone have questions while I switch uh, into pinstripe mode at all? Roy asks, um, when do you use real leaf versus variegated or versa imitation, I bet. Um, I use more genuine leaf on day-to-day -day basis. Uh, all the fire engines and stuff like that that I do is real, um, is genuine leaf. I just, I like working with genuine leaf a lot more than uh, imitation leaf. But the silver is really nice to work with with the imitation leaf because it does not tarnish um so it's technically aluminum leaf where if i was going to use uh real gold i can't use white gold or i can't use silver um genuine silver leaf because it'll tarnish it'll tarnish like under the clear even if you clear it the next day it'll tarnish right away i've seen it tarnish like under two hours um so Instead of using silver, we'll use white gold, and that still has like alloys in it where it can tarnish over time. Or we use palladium, which is mega expensive. That's more expensive than um, 
than 24 karat gold, but it's real nice. Um, did you use vinyl transfer tape as your stencil? I did. I It's the application tape, so I stuck it on, and I had a design drawn out on tracing paper, and I taped that on, and then transferred it, and then I exacted it, and then I drew on like the border, which I didn't have figured in my pattern. So I just drew on top of it and used that. Um, did you freehand the stencil? I drew the stencil on a piece of paper. Um, here it is, this is tracing paper. So I drew the one side. You can see it's all sorts of messy. I drew the one side and then I just did the whole old school crease and traced it on the other side. Okay, so I'm using my little King 13 today. I don't have regular reducer out, so I'm just going to use Terps, which is fine. Let me get my little panel. This little baby panel I can work on. Oh, and like when you, if you ever get a chance to work on like aluminum blanks, save this if you leave because like this stuff will pick up the skewings real, real good. Just did a center line. I'm gonna start pinstriping. Set him back into the corner a little bit more. I'll get my table easel. Metal Mania, thanks for tuning in. I'll try to position it where you guys can see it. Okay. I'll pick Aqua so you can see it real good. How do you come up with the designs? I have a hard time connecting the dots. Uh, designing what, like pinstriping or, or like that piston and wings that I just did. Butch asks, where do I buy my paint bottles? I buy them from SKS Bottling Company. If you go and go on my YouTube and watch my um, beginner's video to pinstriping, I believe I linked the bottles in that description box. And you have to get certain bottles. You just can't get any old plastic bottles. So I believe I uh, linked the item number there. Is there a copper leaf? There is a copper leaf. Um, I'm not using that tonight, but you probably have seen it in some of my designs. So 
about connecting the dots with the pinstriping designs. Um, after you pinstripe a while and you like look at other people's pinstriping, you'll see like certain things are used quite often. Like this is the teardrop that I'm going to be doing, which was very popular even in the 40s, time the Greek used it. And uh, a lot of pinstripers use it. So a lot of times I start out with that as my center. Got off there, so I'll fix that. And then um, it's just a matter of looking at it as as like individual lines. Like next, I'm, I'll probably do a C curve. And I'll go this way. That's one of the C curves. And I've had practice sheets. I have them on Facebook. I have them on my website. Downloadable, downloadable like PDF files. And I have videos on YouTube. I did like a series of six practice videos. Now this is the other C curve going the other way. And I like connecting all my ends. I don't like having ends just like going to nowhere. This is a wipeout tool made by Mac. Hey Lee for tuning in again. Thank you. Tommy the Greek is a very prominent Lee knows what's up. He was a prominent pinstriper um, early on and uh, his work was very classy. The teardrops were famous from him or from as I know from him. I think he's the one that made him really popular. The King 13 is my favorite pinstriping brush. Everyone has their their own things that they like. This one is funny because like I started out with a Mac Green Wrap size double zero and I used that for years and, and um, didn't really bother trying other brushes out or anything like that. I kept to myself and then um, I came across this brush and I gave it a whirl and it grew on me really, really fast. And then it was funny because then I met Todd who designed the brush probably a year after I started using his brush. And now we're like, we're, we're like best buds now. But for me, it's like the perfect size brush for all occasions. And like, see, this is another form of C curves, but I'm just going inward now. And now I'm just going to do more. I do a lot of C curves. I can do a whole panel with doing nothing but C curves. I can do a whole panel doing nothing but straights and then S curves. All my crossover panels, they're just pretty much all S curves. Now this is going to be a more advanced technique that I'm going to be doing. This is going to be a really tight curve and you can see like I'll stay like very very much at like the tip of my brush right there.
Uh, Butch asks if I'm making your designs up as I go, or do I have a preconceived idea? They are usually on the spot. Um, that's how I learn, and that's what I'm comfortable with. So this is all on the spot. I don't know where I'm going next. Sometimes if I have like a themed panel in mind, like if I want to do an Art Deco panel or like a Tiki themed or a Southwest themed, um, I'll configure the lines as I go, still making the design up as I go. But I know, you know, the vision, you know, Art Deco is very, you know, straight up and down or like angular. And same thing with Southwest. If I wanted like Art Nouveau, it would be like very flowy. Um, and Tiki can be very funky with shapes. So, you know, sometimes I'll pick like a theme in my mind and just like try to execute what I vision that theme should be. Not necessarily design, but like aspects of, you know, lines and how they go with each other. I don't sit for the rest of this because otherwise I'd be all positioned weird. Uh, thanks, Butch. It's quiet in here tonight. Do I do helmets? Yes, I do do helmets. I don't do any like automotive spraying though. So if you want your helmet to be flaked out and airbrushed, I don't do that. But I do pinstriping and leafing and lettering on helmets. I get a lot of people asking me to like paint their motorcycles and their cars and they they're looking for like full paint jobs and I just don't do that. Nobody asks, are you using reducer with that paint or just palleting the brush with fresh paint? Um, I've dipped into the reducer probably only like two or three times maybe. I don't, I don't know. But um, I usually use it fresh until the point where I feel like I need reducer. And then I just 
dip the very, very tip of the brush in the reducer, and then I go and palette that into where I'm paletting. I'm a dipper. Some people will mix the reducer right into their paint, and I don't do that. The tip of this brush needs a little haircut. It's a new one. And also, like, if I'm paletting, you can probably see in the corner there, like, my section of paint is getting bigger. So I start, like, here, and then I work myself over this way as I go. I don't stay in the same area. Dan asks, how does your dog do with fireworks? Mine is shaking like a leaf right now. He, my dog is sensitive to everything. Um, he's afraid of everything. Everything. Like, if the curtains blow in the wind, he's scared. Um, he's scared of skateboards. He's scared of his own farts. So, yeah, he's not, not a fan of well, they had the fireworks last night here. So he wasn't much of a fan of that. I had to go out with him last night so he can go to the bathroom. So he wouldn't stand out there and leave himself otherwise. I have a big St. Bernard for those that don't know. Dan, I hope your dog will find some peace tonight. David asks, how did the gold leaf turn out? It's not done yet. I laid the size and now I'm waiting for it. It's back there, that big trash can. I'm waiting for the size to set up. Scrimshaw is hard. That's like really, really hard to do. That's really cool that you've done that. I did that once for my husband for like Christmas and like I did a little itty bitty pocket knife and never again. I never want to try it again. Okay, so I'm almost done with this because I think I think I'll be getting onto that real soon. Hello, thanks for tuning in. Okay, maybe one little circle here. Or an oval or whatever it turns out to be. And then I'll probably be done with this color. So that color is done. Knock that out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on to the trash can. Get my brush out. On this size panel, what is the most colors you have used? On the pinstriping panel, um, I've done the crossovers on that. So that's like a gradation from the rainbow, like from blue to green to yellow to orange to pink. 
um, to purple and then back into white. I've done that on that size panel. Um, I've also probably done a few with eight colors on that. Oh, I forgot. Right there. What a bugger. I forgot. <laughs> These right there. The pull and size up. What a butthead. There we go. Do you use that brush for outlining everything flames? Um, I use that brush for outlining flames most definitely. Um, for straight body lines, I'll use it sometimes if I'm in the mood. Other times I'll use, um, uh, it's called like the Kelly Trickster brush. And then a the MAC 1010 I'll use. It all depends on my mood at the time. Am I going to be at Carlisle in the fall? Um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't set up at Carlisle. It's not the type of event, um, at least I found. I might go hunting for Nova parts if I need some at that time. Or I might sell some Nova parts. All right. So I'm going to size that little mammer jammer right there this this area is not getting any turns so i'll put a nice thin coat on it there i had like one feather that i didn't size up i didn't pull the tape off Any other questions? I think I have to wait like five more minutes to lay any leaf down on this. I'll get the leaf prepared though. Q&A time. Anyone want to shoot some questions over? There's not a lot to be on here, but I figured I'd ask while I have to wait. And then this is going to be the piston. See, this is just like a hobby store aluminum leaf I'm going to use on the piston. Have I ever done anything bigger than a fire truck? I've done a like a trolley car that was way more leaf than a fire truck. And have you ever come to do striping in Canada? I taught a lesson at um, like a mini demo lesson at Letterheads Meet in Quebec, Canada. My favorite Hershey, I live right near Hershey. Um, in Pennsylvania, so I smell the chocolate in the air a lot of days. Um, my favorite Hershey candy, I don't eat a lot of candy. Um, when I used to not live near Hershey, my former boss, when I was still employed by someone else, um, she got me Hershey Kisses, but they were coconut. Hershey Kisses, and I love coconut, so I ate a whole bag of Kisses in one day. That was really bad. Um, it was really good, but it was really bad, and I refused to walk into Chocolate Town and buy another bag of those because I know I'd eat them all in a day. Hey, Jack. Um, this is Jack Fleming, everyone, if you can see his name on the screen. He is, he has a great YouTube channel, um, very diverse artist, pinstriper, reliefer, letter, watercolor artist, all-around great artist. And um, him and my friend Freddie Villa are doing a podcast 
featuring um, pinstripers, a lot of the old timers and the veterans, and he has some newer pinstripers on there too. Um, really, really great podcast. It's called the Pinstripers Podcast. Check it out. They're on Spotify and all that. Apple Podcasts, I believe. Right, Jack? All right, I'm going to start laying some silver down there. That's the first area I hit. out of this one. All right. So a lot of times what I'll take, I'll take my book and roll back the, the paper like that and have a little bit of the, the leaf shown like this. And then I'll slide it out of the book. Not on Apple yet, but mostly everything else. Yeah, everyone check that podcast out. It's great. Now I'm going to roll my finger and roll that out. Um, what temp have you found best for gold leafing? Do you use any additives in size to adjust for temp? I love gilding when it's super hot and humid out um it takes longer with the humidity but i don't know like hot and humid days i've had some brilliant guilds and for those hot days i will thin with turp like pure gum turps This is going to get a big outline anyway, but I'll get him out of there. Yeah, that trolley car I worked on a few years ago, hopefully they're getting ready for the exterior. I did all the ceiling tiles in this, I think it was a 1909 or 1911 trolley car. It's at the Rock Hill Trolley Museum in Pennsylvania. It was the massive, most massive leaf job I ever had to to do as of yet. It was awesome. I haven't done like on fire trucks. I haven't done like something like a tiller, which is like huge. I haven't done one of those yet. That'd be awesome to be able to do a tiller. I don't airbrush. <laughs> um, the I do pretend to airbrush once in a while. I don't really airbrush all that often. Um, but I use a um, Iwata. I have Eclipse models. I have a gravity fed. And then I have um, like one that feeds off the bottom. And I use one shot to spray through it. And I'm still getting used to spraying um, hot use urethane through it. Okay. So now I'm going to find the variegated that I want in that section. Which I haven't made up my mind yet. So I'm working with a few different ones. I kind of want separation between, I have like two red tones, and each one has like a different pattern on it. See, this is like, you can't see, variegated leaf sucks on camera, um, but this has stripes. And then, uh, 
The other one doesn't. I find museum jobs to do. Fun to do. Um, I find museum jobs fun to do, but in my experience, they don't pay great. It is often worth the drop in pay, though, to do jobs that I would otherwise never get to do. What is your experience? Um, I agree with you. The thing with museum jobs is they often do not have the financial backing to um, pay for the, you know, the talent that uh, is needed to do a lot of the jobs, unless they're very fortunate um, to be able to find that money in like forms of grants and stuff like that. Um, I have taken price cuts to do some of those jobs, but, um, if I do one for them, you know, I always say like, Hey, I'll cut you a deal on this, but the next one is going to be full price, which is, would you know, works out, you know, cause they appreciate it. And a lot of times they do come back for more work. So that's nice. But, um, so those projects, you know, in my opinion, it is worth, worth to be able to cut the pay to get some of those jobs done and under your belt. Um, besides the back of your finger, do you use any rollers or pads to press the leaf on? Um, I do have a, like a phone, like um, a speedball briar that uh, I have used. I don't know where it's at right now. So I'm not using it for this at the moment. So I use the back of my hand. It's somewhere, but I've got so much stuff. I like work on the road a lot. So half my stuff is in my car. Half my stuff is in my living room right now, which I hate it being in. And then half my stuff is in the base or, you know, some of it's here in the basement. So I'm not hunting for it. I'll be back on the road this week, so it, it'll pop up when I need it. When I really need it, I don't need it for this, so. So this is one of the variegated. And this is still pretty, pretty tacky, but I know I'm not ending turning this variegated, so I'm fine with uh, sticking it on when it's that tacky. So this area that I want to be careful with. Because that's where my uh, silver leaf is going to be meeting up right here. So right here is where my silver line is going to be. Have you ever had a job that frustrated you to the point of wanting to give up? And if so, how did you get through it? Ooh, that's a good question. And I can't think of a job that meets that criteria. I'm pretty good at figuring things out on my feet. And there's, you know, I've done bull leaf on fire trucks where, like, you know, a line did not come out to my liking. Like, you know, whether um, the gold sank or, you know, whatever happened, you know, I would just, I've, I've wiped off a whole gold leaf line and started all over again. Um, and it's just one of those things, like, it'll humble, gold will humble you. 
and um, you just gotta learn to roll with punches when it comes to that. But I'd rather, you know, redo a whole line and have it look good for the firemen than, um, than be haunted by knowing there's, you know, something out there that I don't really like. Uh, how did you get into pinstriping? What age did you start? I got into pinstriping um, around when I was 18, just turning 19. And uh, it was because I was doing, I was already doing like car artwork and I was at a car show and uh, I had my art on display and all this stuff. And a friend and I were having a conversation in earshot of a pinstriper who I didn't know at the time. And uh, my friend said to me, suggested that I should get into pinstriping. I was like, oh, that would be cool. I've always liked looking at it because I grew up going to car shows. And then um, that pinstriper that was an earshot was like, hey, are you the chick that draws cars? And I'm like, yeah. And uh, they turned around and gave me my first can of one shot. I never saw saw it before and I didn't know what to do with it so you know that's that's how I got into it and um I was handed the can and then I had to go figure out what to do with it there was no YouTube at the time All right. so that's one leaf done I'm not gonna take the excess away because then it'll all be spreading everywhere and I still have to do all this It's going to be silver. And that's here. Hey, Darren. Happy fourth to you, too. All right. So that is two different, there are two different leaves right there. I got silver here and variegated and then silver here. This is all going to be silver. Any other questions, anybody? This is a long process. Seen a post. Uh, seen a post where you showed your first panel, how you kept that is awesome, humbling. I actually didn't keep my first panel. That was like my first tiki design, which was horrible. I kept that. Um, what is the most difficult thing you pinstriped? Uh, I've had really, really, really hard surfaces um, that I've had to pinstripe where, you know, um, the paint was horrible. And, you know, I'm talking about they painted you know multiple different colors in an area and they want you to clean up the edge and the edge is like a cliff um i've had to do a lot of that and it's always frustrating because it never looks good when you know without them sanding that edge down like i'm talking about like there's been like edges where you can use it as a sundial that's how high the edges are and that is frustrating I hate, I hate pinstriping on that, that kind of stuff, because no matter what you do, it's not going to look good. But 
guess I don't need. When pinstriping a design, how long do you wait before you apply your second color one shot? I do not. I do not wait. I'm all like, got to get it done. Um, I paint wet on wet all the time. Uh, all the time. That's, you know, when you go out and you work on the road, there's no waiting for the first color to dry. And um, you, when you paint so long, I mean, I've been painting wet on wet since I started, but when you paint, you'll get you'll get that feel of where you take it, where, you know, you got to get your brush consistency, your paint consistency just right. You got to pull the line, be dedicated to pulling it once and be done with it. Sometimes you can go over it like two to three times, but you can't have too much reducer on it. You can't have too little paint on your brush. You got to have like that perfect drag where like the paint will go over it without pulling the last line up and same thing with lettering yeah my my leaf uh, application style is pretty crude when i'm working with variegated leaf um so i'm very i'm very 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 much more particular when i'm uh applying genuine And like with this, like this is variegated. Um, I can pick it up with wax paper if I want to. And it would lay down really, really smooth. A lot of times, like if I'm doing strips, I'll just roll it out of a book though. I'll show you what I'm rolling out of a bigger book. Uh, Much more control applying your way. I've always pulled the leaf right out of the book. Uh, yeah, like I like rolling it out of the book. Sometimes I'll just pick it up and plop it on there. Um, any advice for practicing crossovers? Practice. Um, and practice a lot. <laughs> That's one of those things like I, I started doing the crossovers years ago because I was horrible at crossing anything over the center at any type of an angle. And uh, it was, that was frustrating in the beginning. Um, so I spent a whole weekend doing nothing but crossing over the center, not necessarily just crossovers, but crossing, you know, just anything over in the center I sucked at. So I spent a whole weekend doing that and uh, practice just one color don't try to showboat your way around doing the multiple colors um, at first because if you can get nice clean lines doing one color you should be able to do it with multiples after that but it takes time and dedicating like a whole weekend on learning them
Okay. Roy asks, besides practicing, who would you say is or was your most encouraging mentor? Um... I would have to say that would fall into the lettering category because um, I'm pretty much self-taught with pinstriping and I stayed, you know, fairly secluded when I learned pinstriping and when I started getting a lot, you know, better with it. I stayed to myself a lot of years, but lettering, I would say um, Todd Hansen has been super influential. I've picked that man's brain to death when it comes to lettering. Um, so Todd, most definitely for that. Okay, now I'm going back to the silver. A little half sheet in there. I'll just pull out. And things like this are great to use, like your skewings up that you've had. Just patch them in. getting there. All right. This one I'm going to be rolling out of the book. This first page is always weird. It has like a plastic top. I hate it. I'm just going to pull that sheet out. Save that for later. Get rid of that first plastic screen there. Guys closer. See, I fold back. Start down here. And roll it on my surface. Now I'm not going to use this sheet because it's not as full as the, you know, the width of that. So I'm going to take a new sheet and do the same process. So that pulled up the whole entire top of that piston pretty much. Now I'm going to do the rest of the border, and that's going to be it for that. And then I have to remove all the excess and engine turn, and then start the whole process over again with the other colors. Do Butch ask, do you burnish the leaf with cotton. No, I do not. This is all imitation leaf. So you'll get pretty much nowhere trying to engine turn it with cotton. Unless it was extremely wet size underneath the, the metal. I use a 5000 grit Trizac sanding paper for uh, burnishing any imitation leaf, whether it be variegated, silver, like this, which is aluminum leaf, and then uh, gold and all that stuff, copper, all that good stuff. You can use three to 5,000 grit sandpaper. I'll show you uh, the burnishers in a minute, in a few minutes. 
I've made my own for quite a while or, you know, I had a friend make me one and all that. And uh, a lot of people ask me where do I get them, where do I get them? And, you know, I just end up making mine for the most part. But uh, I was at like a little gold meet and uh, a gentleman I know from Colorado, he now makes them and he sells his own burnishers. And they're really nice, so I decided to buy, you know, a few of them and give them a go. And uh, I've done like eight panels today of gold leaf and imitation leaf and, you know, all this stuff. And I put them to work and they're really good. So I'll give you guys that info. That way, if you don't feel like making your own, you can just go buy them. So now I have to press all this stuff in. Make sure it's down before I do any work. Tap my seams. Oh, forgot about that little guy right there. Oh, you're going to be in Syracuse. Can't wait to see everybody. That's like one of my favorite panel jams. That was my first panel jam I ever went to. Talk about inspiration overload. It took me about two years to be able to get into it. And then uh, I've been there ever since. The other one that I really loved was actually in Dallas, Texas. It was in February at, I think, the World of Wheels show that they had there. That was another one that I really loved going to. Great sense of community amongst the stripers that showed up. I hope when I peel like all this stuff away, it comes out really nice. You always run the risk of it not going the way you imagine it. It'll go in your mind. This is going to be a pain in the butt to end and turn. Got my little feather duster here. I like to press before I do this, just in case. Now I'm gonna like create like a whole entire storm here, which I hate. Sometimes you can run a vacuum cleaner suck up all the gold while you're doing this well this stuff isn't worth anything when it's you know used but you want to remove the excess before you engine turn anything because that can mess up your gold oh we are bringing it the dallas back the dallas one back next year oh my god jack that's so awesome that's like, seriously, like, if I had to pick two panel jams to go to, it would be Dallas and Syracuse. I really, really, well, I love Texas, so the atmosphere I really like at that jam. I like the atmosphere at Syracuse. The vibes, catching the good vibes at those two. Is it going to be the same charity, Jack? Do you know?
this ledge is built up pretty hard around here, so I'm just gonna nudge it a little bit with my nail. Oh, Jack, that's great news. This is, um, it's designed like a makeup brush. It has softer hair. I mean, some makeup brushes are really soft, but um, I got this through WB. I believe this is an Alpha 6 um, brush. Either got it from WB or from Alpha 6, I forget, but same concept as a makeup brush. It's super soft. A lot of times I use microfiber, but this is like a lot, so I'm just gonna use this. I gotta press the side down now. like the big ass mess right here. Hate that. my mess a bit. Ugh. You guys can see the air in here is just there's leaf floating everywhere. sizing I need to do. This is like a very dark variegated leaf, this one. Can't tell until I like I clear it. That's when you'll really see it. All right, so I'm gonna use this. So I'll show you these spinners. Oh, let me get rid of this. So this is by Pasquale. He turns these with wood, like on a wood lathe, and these little grooves. 
you can uh, put an o-ring on them if you want to cover this with velvet so this is set up for like the trizac it's got like rubber and or foam and then the trizac's on the top i have three different sizes now Yes, I do. Um, is that paper frisket? It's application tape. Anyone else painting while listening? Probably there's a, that's what I do. Like when Nobs is on, I usually uh, paint while I listen to him in the background. So this is gonna be a pain because the way the can is. something hard push against it in the back there. You guys can see a little bit. Um, I was doing photorealism and uh, graphite and then like charcoal and all that stuff. Thanks for doing these lectures. If the temps are too low, if you can run the heater, that's great. If you can thin the paint out a little bit, that's great. And um, just run thin, thin lines. Do these little guys here. Chris says, do you prefer the drill over doing it by hand? Absolutely. When you have to do like a long, long, long vehicle, 
I do it with the and like the drill. It's so much easier. Um, certain surfaces you have to do it by hand, but let me tell you, like I'd rather be using the drill. It saves time. I always laugh when people are like, back in my day, we never used the drill. Bah. And I say, well, back in your day, they probably didn't even engine turn it. Like, I can tell you, like, early um, time periods, there was no engine turning at all. So it's like, how far back do you want to go? It's a tool. This is moving on me, so I'm just gonna... Sure. Find another way to work on it. should work <laughs> oh my goodness hello oh it's so cool all the way from japan do you ever um i have in very rare occasions but not usually all right back to engine turning oh now this is nice and heavy Thank you, one shot. It's not going anywhere now. <laughs> oh, Dan, you should see my collection. Uh, a, a buddy of mine was uh, cleaning out like someplace or was at an, at an auction for like car parts and they had like five gallons of one shot and it's all leaded. Um, there's red, there's black, there's white, uh, mostly unused. It's amazing. I can get away with using the bigger spinner on such a curved surface like that. But I'm gonna try.
doesn't hit it. Hold on. Small one it is. Getting there. done nice and shiny Chris asks is there a drill type you suggest or prefer over another I really prefer the really cheap cheap Harbor Freight one um, it doesn't have that tendency to go real fast real quick it, you know you can go pretty slow on the trigger slower than that too um, I get the battery pack ones I also have the one that I can plug in to the wall from Harbor Freight, and that goes even slower than this one, so that's pretty cool. So now I'm going to peel away, hopefully peeling these away is decent. And this is where I'm going to do another batch of size tonight, which I'm not going to do live because I really have to use the restroom. And I'm probably boring the hell out of all of you right now, so I'll do this not live. The second batch of size and waiting and all that stuff. Now the rest of this isn't going to get engine turned. I might engine turn that. That's going to be um, imitation gold. You're here for the long haul. Well, I'm going to need a break to use the restroom. See you later, Jack. Have a good night.
cut myself on the trash can. Come on. on for almost two hours now. This goes to show you all this stuff takes a lot of time. No, I have never tried tattooing. That is the field that I planned on doing in my life, but found this instead first. <laughs> Got my hands on this before the tattoo machine, so. And this lets me work on cars that I love. All right, guys, I'm going to call it a night because I really got to go to the bathroom. But anyway, this is where I'm going to be at. If you uh, keep an eye on my feed, I'll post a little bit um, the rest tonight as I go. And then um, when I get to clearing and outlining and all that stuff, I might go live again. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do a video of it and then post it. But yeah, so I'm going to tune off. Have a good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. Have a good night. See you later.